Monday morning. Crazy ending to the Monday night football game last night. Bills fans have to be sick this morning with the game and the ending of that game with the penalties and the stupidity and losing to the Denver Broncos at home. And the Buffalo Bills right now are just, they're not a good team. They're just not a good team. A team that we expected to be there in the end is now 5-5, five and five, which makes the Jet situation even more infuriating because you feel like if Aaron Rodgers were here and healthy, we say this every single week, that they'd be right there in a discussion as a team that could maybe even get the one seed. But they're not. And this season is what it is. And they've got the Bills and the Dolphins coming up next. And Rob Sala is insisting that Zach Wilson's going to be the quarterback and he's actually playing well. So I guess my question to Rob Sala would be, if Zach Wilson has been playing well, that means the rest of your offense is horrible? Is that what it is? So then it's Nathaniel Hackett. It's Garrett Wilson. You guys are last in the league in scoring touchdowns. And your star wide receiver said publicly after the game, I'm tired of this, but your quarterback's still playing well. I'm confused, Rob. Explain it to me. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Hey, good morning, G. Here's the thing about Garrett Wilson. I would just button it up, man. You you dropped a key pass in this game this past week. You threw a, a wide open uh, reverse pass in, into the stands. So, like, just just button up and just do your job, man. That's that's all it is. It's simple. It's the great Bill Belichick says it all the time. Just do your job. You don't have to be the spokesperson for the team. You don't have to be telling everybody how frustrated you are because the entire building is frustrated. The entire offense is frustrated. And when there were two plays that needed to be made, you didn't make them. That's what I would do. I would pull them and say, Gary, you know, we love you. We think you're great. We think you're going to be fantastic. I want to show you these two particular plays right here. Where if you make one of these plays or if you make both of these plays, because they're pretty simple, one ball hits you right in the chest and the other ball you throw out of bounds when we would have had a touchdown, uh, we might have won this game and good chance we would have won the game. So, you know, before you start com- bitching and complaining about it's everybody else's fault and you're you're not well, happy he never, about He didn't say that. Yeah, but, he but, just but, said, you know, I'm tired of this, meaning that the offense can't yeah, get in the end yeah, zone. Yeah, but the point being is he's a part of that. He never I said get, he wasn't. Yeah, but he's got, he, he should say it. He said, you know what? I need to make the catch. I need to make the touchdown pass. That That's on me. That's one of the reasons why we are struggling is because we're not all doing our job when we need to do our job. C.J. Uzama with two holding penalties. Look, I, I know. I'm here with you with the quarterback and all that other stuff. I'm just pointing out the realities of the other things that are going on. You know, and last night, which which is amazing for people who did not stay up and watch this game last night, the Bills should have won this game. There's no doubt in my mind. You have a third and ten. You have a pass interference, which was legitimate. Russell Wilson underthrows his wide open receiver for a game winning touchdown, and Taron Johnson comes down and it's a a pass interference and it puts the Broncos into field goal range. Uh, they have no timeouts left at the end of the first half. They execute it per, uh, perfectly getting their field goal team on the field as the clock is running down. Same thing at the end of the game, which is really amazing. Very rarely do you see that. Uh, You might see that three or four times a year where you have to run the field goal team on at the end of the half or at the end of the game with the clock still running because you can't stop it. And obviously Mike Westoff is a part of that staff out there in Denver. So the man who invented special teams will make sure that he's got his guys all buttoned up and they execute it perfectly. But on the game-winning field goal, the first game-winning field goal try and attempt, uh, the Buffalo Bills inexplicably have 12 men on the field. Will Lutz misses Misses the game winner. Misses it. Flags are all over the place. And, of course, the Bills have 12 men on the field. And it turns into a 36-yarder, which he drills, and that's the end of the game. And that's the end of the game. So here's, here's the thing. So I don't know if you saw this, but at the end of the game, DeMar Hamlin actually gets into the game. And I think he's on the field for the the last part of the, um, you know, the 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 whole situation. Now, I, you know, he's a third string safety. He's on the team. It's great. It's a great story. I don't know if it was him that shouldn't have been on the field for this field goal attempt late in the game. I don't know. Sometimes injuries happen. Players aren't always schooled up on everything they're supposed to be doing, where they're supposed to be, what units they're a part of. And when all this helter skelter is going, it's like a fire drill. So you got the guys coming on from the Denver Broncos sideline. You got the field goal block team coming on from the Buffalo Bills sideline. And there's probably indecision on somebody's part. I don't know if it's Demar. I don't know if it's somebody on the uh, the defensive line who ended up staying on the field when they shouldn't have been on the field. Yeah, and this is sloppiness that you wouldn't expect from this team that we thought was so well coached. But right now, the 
heat is on Josh Allen. The heat is on Sean McDermott. They were Super Bowl favorites for most of last year. Obviously, things did change with the DeMar Hamlin story, and then we thought that that was going to propel them maybe to the Super Bowl. It didn't work out that way. Now they've come back here, and they're 5-5, five and five, and the Jets have them this week, and the Jets beat them already, but I, I don't look at this game like the Bills have some sort of huge advantage. As much as I don't like the Jets and the fact that they can't score, the Bills right now are a mess. So the Bills turned the ball over, I think, three times last night, and it resulted like in four. Uh, four times, and resulted in six points for the Denver Broncos. So the the defense, even though it's missing five starters at some point in this game last huh. night, actually kept them in the game. And their last touchdown drive, they didn't even throw the ball. They only ran it. They they ran it, uh, I, I, I think, like six different times. And Josh Allen ultimately runs it at the end uh, to get the touchdown to put them ahead. But, I mean, the amount of mistakes that have been made, I mean, maybe it's just a funk up they're in up there. I don't know what it is. Maybe the Jets are the team that, you know, they need to play right now in order to get their get mojo right back. Game. But get right game. But here, here's the interesting thing. And I know this is this is far out there, but I do believe that if Miami loses to the Raiders this week and they fall to six and four and the Jets. Well, that's not happening. They're hosting the Raiders. I mean, they're like a 12-point no, no, under. I didn't say it was <laughs> it's not happening. happening. I, was, I didn't say it was happening. happening. <laughs> I mean, you said if they do. Well, it's not even, I didn't, well, it's I, not I, even entertain I, that. And by the way, yeah. there's that mojo where the Raiders think their defense is good because they just played the Jets. And the Giants. That, right. And now they got to go on the road and go <laughs> yeah. play the Dolphins. Right. But there's still a chance. Okay, go ahead. the NFL. Go ahead. If somehow Aiden O'Connell, mm-hmm. who beat the Jets and the Giants, can go on the road and beat the Miami Dolphins, and somehow Zach Wilson leads the Buffalo Bills, I mean, I believe the Jets over, uh, to a victory over the Bills. If, if my if my cor- uh, calculations are correct, I think uh, Black Friday is for first place in the AFC East between the Jets and the Dolphins. Uh, yeah, it would be. Your calculations would be right. But the chances of the I'm gonna tell you, Raiders the beating Miami what? down there you know are slim to none. Slim to none. Slim to none. You know what that is? It's you making sucking sounds. Yes, yeah, you're face. getting sucked in again. Who's getting sucked in? The jet fans getting sucked in again. Yeah. This is where this is where you're like, oh my god, the season's over. We're four and five, and you know, whatever. We got seven games left or eight games left. So we're out of it. I don't know how you could say you're out of it with half the well, season left. Uh, well, this you're is this is why you're, you're not, not out of it. Right? No, not but you got to go up there. You got to beat Buffalo, and if the Raiders somehow beat the Dolphins, oh man, Black Friday game, Eddie. You ready to rock and roll? Could be for first place. Yeah, I don't think that. Is that crazy, though? Come on. Would that is that the craziest thing ever? Yeah, but, I mean, the Raiders aren't. Be, I mean, it, it is. Sure, it's crazy, but what's going to happen is you're talking about two massive upsets that would have to go on. So the Bills are a six-and-a-half point favorite. and the and the uh, But the other one is. It's 11-and-a-half points. I'm the telling Bills, you right, I'm the telling Bills you right are, now. They're a minus two. Yeah, I mean, just I'm stop. I'm telling you, that's exactly right. They don't right. score touchdowns. Oh, God. See, I told you, they still got a chance. I'm, tell- I'm telling you, there's mm-hmm. still a chance. Uh, right. Mathematically, there's still a chance, but there you go. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. I mean, I just, it, by the way, you know who looks really bad this morning? Nathaniel Hackett, for a couple of reasons. One, Sean Payton has turned this thing around after a misery. And I know they should have lost the game, but they won the game. They won the game. It's all and matters. it was the other team's coach and the undisciplined stuff with the Bills. They've cost them the game. So they've turned this thing around now and made themselves relevant in the AFC. Nathaniel Hackett's over here manning as the offensive coordinator the worst offense in football. And Rob Sala says yesterday that Zach Wilson, first year in this new system, and this is a system built you know, around Aaron, so... You know, we're really trying to figure things out. Still in week 11? He's been out since September 11th. You're telling me that you haven't made the necessary adjustments to go from Aaron Rodgers to Zach Wilson and you're still running the same offense that Aaron Rodgers would have been running? Wow. Nathaniel Hackett comes across as a total boob this morning. Well, especially with Russell Wilson playing reasonably well last night. I mean, they only had 300 total yards of offense. But again, when you get turnovers... You know, you're going to get short fields and things of that nature, and you're going to settle for field goals. They settled for four field goals last night. But, uh, you know, Russell was 24-29 for like 195 yards or something, two touchdowns and no turnovers. That's always the key. And uh, meanwhile, uh, Josh Allen continues his maddening and frustrating, exhilarating, 
uh, incredible quarterback play where, you know, it's just let me throw it to the other team at the wrong time. I mean, at the end of the first half, it was just the interception there was a bad one. That was a really bad one. So here he is. He's got 19 interceptions uh, since 2022. He had 19 interceptions. 2023, he's got 14 interceptions. Which leads the league. Yep. And and in both cases, led the league. So you're looking at 33 interceptions in two years. I mean, that's that's insane. That's yeah. that's way way too many. And I don't, you know, he's great, and he led his team back to a fourth quarter. He took the lead. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit here and blame him for that. They took the lead, and their defense had a couple good plays, and then there's that pass interference, and then too many men on the, the field. That's not on Josh Allen. That's not on the offense. That's on the defense that actually played reasonably well last night. Yeah, that's a tough penalty, too, by the way, the the pass interference, because the ball is completely underthrown. And I do think that the defender was trying to turn around and Doesn't play matter. the ball. That's always got to be called pass interference. But that you know sucks, that. though, because the I mean, ball is Wilson so just, underthrown. I mean, if Russell Wilson just steps into it and throws it, and I know he's seeing a, a, you know, a blitz, but he's got to be thinking, man, oh, my God, I can't believe they're doing it again because they blitzed on the previous play and they got him. So in this particular play, uh, Sean Payton says, okay, inside slot guy is going to go right down the seam, and, and if he gets off – the, the press coverage, he's going to be wide open, and he was. And Russell just kind of floated it up there, and they were lucky that, you know, fortunate, I should say, that they got the pass interference call, but that should have been an easy touchdown. Pass. No, I, listen, I know that that's going to get called every time. I'm just saying that is when you're on the other side of that, that's tough. Oh, that's, a, so that's a miserable throw, and that shouldn't have been – like you should not be rewarded for that throw is basically what I'm trying to say in, in that situation. But, yeah, I mean, I if I'm, if I'm Nathaniel Hackett after – Look at this thing. After watching this now, it's a terrible throw. Um, it should have been a touchdown. He's got two steps on him. Just miserable. Um, but if I'm Nathaniel Hackett, after all the stuff and the crap that Rob Sala and, and they were talking in response to Sean Payton, and remember Rob Sala at the end of the Bronco game goes, stay humble to Sean Payton and all of that stuff. Aaron Rodgers going off on Sean Payton. If I'm Nathaniel Hackett this morning and I'm seeing the Broncos surging and I'm seeing my offense at the bottom of every single category, I'm not feeling too good about myself, quite frankly. I'm just not. I'm not. You know what? I said it in the beginning of the season. The most important person when Aaron Rodgers went down in that building was Nathaniel Hackett. And so far, it's been a failure. That's true. Well, I mean, Nathaniel Hackett did have Blake Bortles in the playoffs. Nathaniel Hackett did get uh, Aaron Rodgers a couple of MVPs. He did. Uh, But this particular situation here... If if what Rob Sala said, and I still think it's more Zach Wilson than Nathaniel Hackett, don't get me wrong. I'm not changing my opinion on that. But if what Rob Sala said yesterday is true, that they're still operating under the same exact offense that Aaron Rodgers would have been running, and they haven't made adjustments to allow Zach Wilson to do different things that maybe Aaron Rodgers can do that Zach can't, then that's a miserable job by the coaching that, staff. Well, where that comes would be at the line of scrimmage. There are things that Aaron Rodgers can do at the line of scrimmage that I don't believe that you feel comfortable about have Zach Wilson, having Zach Wilson do all that stuff. Yeah, and that's probably the biggest thing that um, that is missing here. And I'm sure that look, he calls a play with Garrett Wilson, reverse pass. Mm-hmm. The play is wide open. And where did Garrett Wilson throw the ball? Oh yeah, I mean nowhere near anybody now, that could catch it. I would say what, maybe 10 minutes earlier, 15 minutes earlier, Garrett Wilson got taken out of the game because his right elbow was hurt. Which is, is that on the coaching staff? I mean, you got to know that. Yeah. I mean, you should know that. And, and it's easy for us to sit here and say that they should have known that. But one of the hardest things to do during a football game is really communicate with everybody that's involved in everything. And I don't know if the, you know, do the trainers know that Zach, uh, that uh, Garrett Wilson could be a part of this particular play. Do they know that? Probably not. <laughs> you know, they're just worried about getting him healthy. Yeah, he wants to play. And does Garrett Wilson say, hey, coach, don't call that play because I don't think I can throw it. With oh, my pro- no way. He probably worked on it in practice all week and probably wanted to do it. And, yeah, had an opportunity to make a huge play in a close game. I'm, I'm sure that he wanted to. We've talked about that many times with athletes. Sometimes they're their own worst enemies. I could get through this, and obviously he couldn't. But I, the, the coaching staff right now, the longer that they double down and talk about how everybody has 
had problems, and it's not just the quarterback and this and that and Rob Sala and the stuff that he said yesterday, the more spotlight and heat is going to be on Rob Sala and Nathaniel Hackett. And and that's, I think, I think now that turn is starting to happen a little bit because if you keep – if Rob Sala is insisting that Zach is playing well, then you're telling me that the rest of the offense sucks. That's what you're telling me. And you're telling me that if Zach is playing well, that you'd be in a similar situation with Aaron Rodgers. That's what you're telling me. So I, I, I and, and you're also making me question him knowing offensive football if he thinks that that is playing well. I guarantee if you if he was uh, talking about Aaron Rodgers playing well, that would be averaging 24 points a game. Zach Wilson playing well. It's just a matter of language, you know. And what are you comparing it to? You can't compare it to what Aaron Rodgers has got on paper and what his resume says. You have to compare it to what Zach Wilson was doing last year as opposed to what he's doing this year. Yeah, but he didn't say that. He said he's playing pretty well. What he compared said. to, to compared he didn't to say what? compared to last yeah. year. He just said pretty well. Look, if you he just if, said if, pretty well. If you're hitting receivers in the chest and they're dropping it, or like you know, there was a on that last drive, he he throws the ball. I think it was it was either to Conklin or Uzama, whatever. It's the seam route down the right side. And he jumps up and he has to throw it. And he's getting drilled right as he's throwing it. That's a great play. That is a great. Well, I know you play. think he can play, Zach Wilson. I know that you believe that he's going to be a star, and you've seen some great things from him. So I know that you're backing him, and <laughs> and you, you put your reputation on the line, saying that Zach Wilson uh, played great. You, he, he makes great yeah. throws, and he's tantalizing. I mean, listen, he and is, I respect he is it. Tantalizing. I respect I, it. I respect you and your opinion on Zach Wilson being a great quarterback. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you that if you just look, and I'm not saying that he is the answer. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you just look at it through the prism of a play-by-play-by-play situation and you watch some of the throws he makes. Now, if, if what's his name, Patrick Mahomes throws a no-look pass, the whole world stops. And we all have to oh, bow. He's also, I mean, but he's yeah. won Super Bowls, man. Well, of course, we're doing that. So when so when Zach this throws his no look pass, that no look pass was unbelievable, and that pass to the seam where he jumps up and has to make this throw, and it's a perfect throw, and it is caught by the intended to receiver. And when he hits it's Garrett Wilson in stride, that he may still be running, and he hits him in the chest and he drops it. I mean, like you, you when you look at it like individually. You could, like I told you yesterday, you could see the tantalizing arm strength. You could see it. Hey, uh, Fleegs, what was that stat that you tweeted out? You have that in front of you. I'm sure that you'd be able to get it very quickly. Fleegs uh, had a Zach Wilson stat. All right, let me hear it there, Michael, who was in for Al Dukes this morning. Zach Wilson has thrown a touchdown on just 20 of his 931 career passes. His 2.1% touchdown rate is the lowest in NFL history among players with at least 900 passes. Boomer G on the fan in CBS Sports <laughs> Network. 